Baby, we done got all the way down here to episode six, baby. And this is the last episode of Asking for a Friend season three. And I have been your host, the one and only T.S. Fucking Madison. Now, baby, let me tell you something. In this episode, we talking about black fishing, cat fishing, white fishing, honey, all types of fishing outside of the fish in the fucking sea. We gonna also talk about preferences, cause I got a preference. My preference is a black nigga. I loves me a black nigga. I don't like nothing else but a black nigga. That nigga can go rip me off, pull all my cash out in the bank, bitch, and, and, and give it to another motherfucker. That nigga can take me, tie me to the back of a white Bronco and drag me all up and down Highway 85, bitch, and pull the skin on my back. When I heal up, I'm gonna look for me another motherfucking black nigga cause that's what I like. Now listen, let me ask you your preference. What's your preference? What you like? Now the last week the bitch told me that he liked the red bowls, now he liked chocolate. You see, this is what I'm talking about. You get to swip and switch and switch on out, but whatever, whatever you like, that's your preference. But just don't make nobody else feel some kind of way because that's what you like. Remember, everybody got their own fucking preference, but that don't make your preference better than somebody else's. Now watch the goddamn final episode of the show. And if you burn my head, I'ma fuck you up. Thank you. What's up y'all? This is your girl T.S. Madison, honey. And we are here today talking about all things interracial. Interracial dating, interracial kids, interracial every freaking thing. And I have a lot that I want to say but my co-host today is Shikana Joe, and I think that I'm going to let her start out first in, <laughs> in her whole interracial thing so you're so pretty thank you. you are you sure you're not mixed I, don't, I ain't mixed you give me that you you know you give me that you Asian and well, I take that back I, I think we all mixed I think everybody in the world is mixed up with something but you give me very you're so beautiful thank you T.S. man stop making me don't do that. Blush. Yes. But you should because you are. You give me very Asian and Indian together. I I, I have That's my days. Drop dead gorgeous. So I have my days. Oh, girl, please. But you give me very Asian, very, very Chinese, very Japanese. I need to get me a Chinese man, but they say they small. Okay, so now that you now that I was waiting for you to set it off like that. Uh, so let's set it off. How do you feel about interracial dating? I think it's cute. Until until what? Nigga. Mm -hmm. They call me a nigga. I know how to say something back. What you gonna say? Cracker. <laughs> but interracial dating just does not mean black and white. Sometimes it no, could it be, you know. Indians. And yeah. So my thing is, you know, my brother is married to a Cuban woman. Yeah, he showed up. That's a blessing. Why is it a blessing? Because it's cute. So you said it's a blessing because what? It means a blessing. He could have got him um, a Cuban. Y'all from Miami, you act like this is not normal. Right. It's a lot of biracial um, relationships going on in Miami. It All is. That. I've, I, I, listen, my my actual first uh, sexual encounter was outside of my race. What? Yes. What color? Puerto Rican. Puerto Ricans are black. No. Puerto, Rick, Puerto Ricans are Puerto, 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 Puerto Ricans. Puerto, are Puerto Ricans are black. No, there are black Puerto Ricans. But they're black. I consider Puerto Rican and African American. Okay. Here's my thing. When people start dating outside of their race, uh -huh. what they tend to do is like they'll get with that race of person that they're dating and they'll hire up them over their own race. Oh, hell no. I don't like that. I'm not liking it either. I love my, I love my race. Here's the thing. I love, um, I love black men. Mm -hmm. That's black men. Listen, I built my entire empire off of being with black men mm -hmm. and not just because monetary value but i just love black men i love that, them too but that, ain't, some of, ain't none of these men ain't shit. none of them ain't, ain't shit. None of them no. shit you can have puerto rican you can have black ain't you can none have of them ain't shit so why it don't matter these, these motherfuckers ain't shit all right cool but what i'm not going to do mm -hmm. is i'm not going to date outside of my race Girl, and I'm, stop no listen you gotta let me finish i will fuck outside my race you gonna date outside your i, I bet if Junior walked up on your ass right now. Who is Junior? The white man. Mm-mm. Junior walked up on your ass right now, had all his stuff together, and got, you, got to look in your eyes together, took you on a private jet and showed you the best time of your life. I mean, that has been done to me before. But I'm talking about he really was in love and there. Uh, that's been done to me Child before. Child, please, you'll fuck with him. For his money? Oh, that's evil. Now, you're a dirty bitch for that. <laughs> Why is that? Because you are. You're supposed to date for love. 
For his money, yeah. No, but not for his money. The money gonna come. So let's talk about how black men start dating or or start dating white women or women outside of the race and start telling and start gassing those women up and telling those women that, you know, uh, y- you better than sliced bread and ain't now a black woman on your level. Mm, it's sad. Do you think that that happens? Yeah, yeah. I think all, yeah the time. all the time. It happens all the time. I don't think it's cool. No, I don't think it's cool either. And that's my problem. Mm-hmm. When they when when people start dating outside of their race and they go over there and they blow the head blow them people's head up, making it seem like that, like, oh my God, there's there's nothing better than you. Right. Now, I know that there's gonna be some women out there in the audience or in the comment section say, Well, you a man and you a transsexual or whatever and you don't know anything about this. When I was into the business of dating, even when I was a hooker. A lot of those men would tell us black girls that, you know, we don't look like them. They look better than us. And that like they're they're the real definition of of transitioning. I, I you know, I, I've, I've experienced it the same way. And this is why I tell black women that t- black trans women and black women have intersectionality when it comes down to certain things Shoulder. and you know even when it comes down to that shit with them niggas like i done had niggas be like oh y'all don't look like them and they they just more better than y'all mm. and i just was like what the fuck you know and i'm still sitting over here saying well ain't nothing better than a black man t- to me you right. know because that's that's how that's i right. feel um my thing is I think when people start dating outside of their race, they take on these, the whole thing of leaving the door open to be a nigga. Mm-hmm. And I have witnessed it with my own eyes. I tell anybody, date who you love, love who you date, but also remember that who you dating. Yeah. And what you're dating. Remember that. When you, just like you said, you won't go date, go out and date you a white man and this and the other, whatever. I don't got no problem with that, sister. Mm-hmm. But you know they, that cult- culturally, culturally, we are different. Mm. Foods are different. The way the upbringing is different. Raising kids are different. You know what I'm saying? It's just different things that are just different. I just been dating so many black men, you know, and I just want none of them worked out. Unfortunately, why would you say that none of them worked out? They didn't work out for me. Could it be you? It might have was. They didn't work out for me. I'm not knocking them. I'm just saying I've dated a couple, and now one of them dicks worked out for me. So. I dated the rich, I dated the poor, I dated the needy, okay, African American. So I was just saying I wouldn't mind going on the other side because I done dated all. Now side. let's say you get on that other side and you start dating this white man, mm-hmm. and he just start whooping your ass. I'm gonna beat the fuck out of him right back. He just start whooping your he, ass. When I get done, he gonna think he was in slavery. <laughs> Somebody he whooping my ass. I, I'm traumatized from that shit. I ain't like no man raise his hand at me. Uh, uh-uh, I got a pistol and I will beat his ass. Mm. And I got my mace. I break that bitch down to the floor. I'm not playing with that. You know, I was in an abusive relationship. You remember that? Yes, I do and remember. When you've been in an abusive relationship and you got you get out of that, it's zero tolerance to a motherfucker raising a hand at you or even getting too loud. Nigga get too loud for me, I'm looking for my pistol. It's bad, but it's just the truth. Cause you wanna get loud and I'm already short to the ground and I'm scary and I'm fucking with no scary person. Somebody gonna whoop my ass Well imagine Shit, a nigga. white man Telling you Nigga bitch I beat your motherfucking and ass And I'ma tell that nigga Cracker bitch Turn over Turn over Damn right Cause he acting like He wanna be fucked Talking to me like that Turn over Yeah when men Gonna talk to you like that Doing this bitch This I do this They got a little sugar In their tank You think so Hell yeah They wanna put A man who put a woman down He just only mad Cause he ain't the woman He's upset because he ain't yet ventured off to be the best he could be in his life. You know what I'm saying? I feel like any man who's domestic violence, who beat on a woman, he want his ass played in. That's just my opinion. And you entitled to have your opinion yeah, about that. Uh-huh. But we talking about a white man. Man, that white man think about touching me, he going to go back to slavery because I'm going to be the master. And he going to be the slave. And I'm going to whoop his ass. Ain't nobody going for that. But Good you man. know, I want to I want to say something about that. I want to piggyback on that. Okay, come now, on, let's do it. Let's piggyback. It's fucked up or whatever. But just him. I want to just say this now. A white man came to the black king and told him he offered him mirrors and knives for his people, and the and the, and, and the, the African king gave his people away. If it was vice versa, if the black king would have went to the white man and said, 
I want to. I got mirrors for you and glasses or whatever. Don't you think the white man would have sold some of his people too? Where did you get this parable from? Oh, girl, you better look it up. I want to know why people, why us as African American people don't know how to get along. So I did a little research and went on back down the line, and I'm like, damn, he's that, that he sold us. You know, so that make a lot of sense why we be so angry and bitter with each other. It's history. Look it up. But they I'm, keep that away from us. They don't tell you stuff like that. Oh, really? Yeah, because they want to keep it going. You know, but the but truth what, is. But what we, what we keep it going? I'm saying, like, keeping that, that going. If you think about it, this man sold off his people for knives and mirrors. Okay, stop. Y'all never heard that? Somebody need to get on Google and look it up. I'm very lost for knives and mirrors. For mirrors and not mirrors and weapons, he traded his people. Okay. Okay. Fine. I can't you know, I never. Ch- I, listen, you you entitled to have the, the thoughts and opinions and why? But it's the, it's like the truth. I looked it up. The only reason I looked it up because I wanted to know why African American people don't like each other so much. Like why are we always crowds in the bucket? Well, African American people don't like each other much because of the way that you know, the slavery has. Put that in place for us not to Girl, like Yeah, we ain't been enslaving. You don't know what it's like, me neither. No, I, I do, we don't know what it's like. So I, we like. can't put that on it now. Uh, but there are things that have uh, passed down from that, like oh. traumas that have passed down from that. Like, so it's fed it, Like be- house niggas, field niggas, <laughs> light skin versus dark. That light skin versus dark is still out here strong. Yes, it That's is. It. And, but and you, all of that stuff also stems from slavery. We ain't going to keep making it no excuse, don't matter. Because but, us as black women, we live in our best life. And ain't neither one of us going through no goddamn slavery. You know why? Because we got our hands was hustlers to make something happen. We did. You know, so we can't keep making up an excuse. But for there is something called systemic racism, though. Yeah, it is. But I don't really, I ain't even, I don't live in it. To each his own, but I don't live in. But sister, you may not live in it, but we still are affected by systemic we, racism. I do believe that, right? But I also believe if if people learn how to care themselves better, have something going on, we cannot keep having that as an excuse because God has freed us from that. So how do we keep going back to that other than living your life? We live in our life. We make sure our credit is together. We can drive. We want to drive. We live in nice homes. Yes, but all of this stuff is a part of patriarchy and white supremacy. Okay. These are systems that are in place that are, are put. And this is why we don't see it because it, we have been so affected by it so much. And we look at each other. We, well, we suffer from that. I was just at Six Flags. Okay. Okay. And I had the handicap thing where you could cut the line. Well, this white woman came up to me and she said, what the fuck are you doing? I say, no, bitch, what the fuck are you doing? Okay. You understand? Uh Uh-huh. So, I jumped white with her and cussed her motherfucking ass out like a white person would cut. You know, what I'm saying to you is, they ain't really running shit. Oh. Not to me. They not. Only to a certain extent. The Jews running more than them. The Jews have more control than the whites. You don't agree? There's a lot of things that I, 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 you put thoughts in my head, but there are also things that I know that, that there are systems in place that are keeping us oppressed, sister. Oh, girl. It is. I, I, there are lots of systems in place that are keeping us away from certain things. Well, I did get scared about this, though. No shade. I got upset the other day when I found out mm-hmm. that, you know, gays, if, if people don't want the gay and they, a gay person in a restaurant, they could put them out now. Okay, that happens. I don't like that. I think it's so fucked up. Well, who do you think who do you think makes these laws? I think it's fucked up. Not sure, but it's not right. Because I feel like that's their first thing. They're doing that first, and then next, they're gonna try to reinvent slavery. Now, I do believe that. But sister, all I of believe it- that was the first straw to trying to see if they're gonna bring slavery back. That's my opinion because they trying the gays, and it's not fair. Tell somebody they can't come in a restaurant and eat. I cried when I found that shit out. They fucked with me. Well, they also tell gays that they can't get health care as well. Gays and trans people can't get health care or they're being denied housing and things like that as well. And so when I see people talk about, well, we need to have um, a straight pride and it's just like, well, no one's oppressing you for being straight. So, again, I say that there are systems that are in place from systemic racism that we all suffer for. I just pray that my, my dream in this world today, in this the world today is that. Everybody can get along, love one another, and treat each other, treat each other right, no matter what color you are. I just wish we could, people, could, we could get over that. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait till the day come where everybody could just be together and come together and be okay without all that animosity and hate. You know? What well, I'm I don't think that the day is going to ever come. 
I, I used to have hope for it, but, but it I might. Yes, I don't. I don't think the day is going to ever come. I used to have hope for it, but once I see our people as black people using the same the same rhetoric that white supremacy has put in place, using the same tone, using the same system towards their LBGTQIA people. This is the same way that white folks who occupy positions of power do black people. And you turn around and you do it to the gays. And so this is why I said that there are systems in place like systemic racism that we are still suffering from. We are still fighting, for fighting against that affects us all. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we've come to the end of this segment. It's so sad. It is very sad. We've come Listen, black people to the world. I love my black sisters and brothers, and I'm just praying one day that we can all get along as a whole. As a whole, whites, black, Indians, who else? Some of missing out. Chinese, everybody, come on, help me. Everybody. Everybody. We want everybody to be able to get along, right? But always remember that you a nigga. I, I love being a nigga. I know that, but... And first of all, I'm not no nigga. Well, you're a nigga. I'm an African-American black woman. Uh, are you a black American? We ain't never been in Africa. Well, yeah, I'm a black American. You're a black American. Uh, you think the Africans like you? I don't know if all of them do. Oh. Uh, they sold us, didn't they? I told you the truth. Hey. Hey. Let's do our research. See y'all down do there in the research. comment section. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Bye. <y> <laughs> Hey y'all, this is T.S. Madison, honey, coming to you loud, live, and in color. I hope that you have enjoyed this entire season of Asking for a Friend. And I'm that black friend, bitch. That's that black friend. I'm dark brown, dark skin, light skin, beige, fluorescent beige, bitch. You already know the rest. Huh? I'm black. Now listen, we have a responsibility as black folks to hold each other accountable, to uplift each other, but most of all, our responsibility on the top of the list is to love one another. One thing we ain't gonna be, and that's anything else, but black. You're black everywhere you go. You're black in your country, you're black outside your country. You're black, black like that. And I need for you guys to take away from this whole experience over here on Blavity, the bitch you black like that. I love you, I love you for real. And I want you to stand, always stand in your blackness. Be proud to be black. It's an honor to be black. And remember baby, black is beautiful all day. Yes, yes honey, yes, yes. Oh my God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Asking for a Friend season three has come to an end. And we are gonna go out with a bang because we got a caller out there with the final question for the friend. Caller, what's your question? What's your, what, what question you got for the doll? Hi TS. So my boyfriend and I, both 28, uh, we've been dating for well over a year. I'm black and my boyfriend is white, so this is my first time in an interracial relationship. So he comes from a super wealthy family from South Carolina, and he's everything that my parents could have ever wanted from me. He's handsome, he's kind and successful, and he treats me extremely well, but they don't approve of him. So I don't know what I should do, if I should stay in this relationship or if I should explore something else just because I feel like my family will never accept him. Ooh. Now this one is going to be a hard question or for me to like give my answer on. Currently right now, I can tell you that you got to do what's best for you. You have to do what makes you happy. Um, honestly, uh, there's nothing that a white man can do for me except pay all the bills. And obviously your white husband is doing that for you. And that's great. Um, but uh, you got to do what, what's best for you. I'm going to go personal. My brother is currently dating. Both of my brothers are dating 
uh, Cuban girls. Uh, my brother actually married his uh, Cuban girlfriend and, and they are together. And my other brother, my youngest brother has uh, two kids with the Cuban girl and they are going to get married. Now, I don't have any problem with anybody's race or anybody's uh, uh, preference or any anything. It just comes down, boils to the cultural differences. So I remember the very first time when my mother uh, uh, had a little discrepancy with my sister-in-law. And I remember my mom saying to me, well, boo, they don't even, they don't eat greens and they don't know how to, they don't do the black eyed peas, they don't do this, blah, 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 you know. And I said, mommy, you have to understand that there are, they are a different culture. And you can't be offended if they don't eat your black eyed peas or your, or your greens or, or your, or they don't know about the way that you prepare because they're culturally different. It is completely different. And, you know, then she went on to talk about because we were raised, we were Baptist. And so they're Catholic. And the very first time they start talking about Catholic and, and Hail Mary's and, and 67 rosaries, the moment that she, they, they, she, she didn't really understand, I said, Mommy, this is these were the reasons why I was trying to tell you to tell your sons to date what they know or date black or date and they and they folk you know and, and i said i don't want to hear nothing about that you i was racist and i don't like and because that was not the case because the case was the moment that they call that they have a discrepancy with you and you my mama and they call you a nigger i'm gonna slap the shit out of them in front of my brothers so i just which they have not done so i don't want y'all to think that my sister-in-law do that but there have been a lot of outside of the cultural things that they didn't understand that, that my mama was really blown back or didn't and no and i say well mommy i, I told you I, I i told you mommy and sometimes we sit around and we have conversations and then and the negro word comes up even negro for me the word negro coming up in conversation I cringe a bit. I'd be like, Ooh, "Please, oh God, please don't, don't do it." Now my brothers are happy. They have um, my my nephews and my nieces. They are happy. I love my nephews and nieces. They they can't help what they are. They they they're black and Cuban, and 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 they can't help these things. And I love them. And I love my sister in laws. But I still and and. and, and I still and you should still make sure that the boundaries are still in place because the day may come when he you make that motherfucker mad and he fuck up and say with your black ass you know what the fuck that mean it means nigga you know it so when you get into these places you have to do what makes you happy you have to let your parents know that you are an adult but when y'all have racial problems inside the house don't take that to your mom and them don't take that shit to your mom and them because just like me telling my mama i told you i, I told you mom i told you mama and so your mom gonna be like girl i told you you know even though both of you guys are 28 years old and you guys are living in a time now where where we're where, where we, we're trying to progress forward as a race Ask them how they feel about the whole George Floyd thing. Ask, ask them about that. Ask them how they feel about reparations for black people in America with his wealthy ass. Ask them uh, uh, about redlining and, and college funds. And, and, and ask them about all the things that really are a uh, 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 part of a systematic racism peace that our people uh, 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 feel. Ask about that. Ask about uh, how your credit may be, may not be as good as his, but his is, his is going to always be better than yours. You know, it's just these things. Now, I'm not telling you not to love who you love. I'm just telling you, love who you love and know who you love it. And that's probably what your mom and them telling you, you know. Anyway, that's your friend telling you that and with my own experience. I love you like a fat bitch love chocolate chip cookies. Bye. Hey, y'all. This is the section of our show where we ask an expert 
Today, our guest is Jackie, honey. Jackie, what's your last name? Iyama. Jackie Iyama. And she has written a book called? Racial Wellness. Racial Awareness. So, Jackie, we're here because we know we're discussing all things race, uh, uh, interracial. What is racial wellness? Absolutely. So, racial wellness is essentially the different practices that we can infuse into our life to, to stay well. Being in a society that continuously subjects us to racism causes a lot of trauma. Like racism is a form mm. of abuse. People don't really view it in that way. But like when you replace racism with abuse and racist with abusive, it becomes easier to really understand like how it impacts us emotionally, physically, spiritually, in all these different ways. And so mm. racial mm. wellness, the book just essentially dives into those different parts of us, whether it's mental wellness, emotional wellness, spiritual wellness, physical wellness, and helps us sort of unpack and figure out like what can healing look like, whether it's individually, whether it's like with each other, um, whether it's institutionally. And so that's what racial wellness is about. And yeah. I'm yeah. so I'm sick of this racial shit. I'm not. I think that no, I'm just. I'm sick of it because I hate the white people had to meet us and we had to go through all that and we had to live with this. But they the did trauma. it. They did it. But it's fucked up that we still yeah. have to like be in Absolutely. this shit years on down the line. And it's called Absolutely. systemic racism. And it's I fucked agree. up. It's called systemic racism, sister. Jackie, we brought you here because we were having a very deep conversation about um, interracial dating. Uh, in intersectionality, black women and black trans women uh, face the same things when it comes to dating men that date outside of their race. Um, lots of times people don't want to have that type of conversation, yeah. <laughs> but it is most definitely true. Uh, I was talking to Shekana over here and I was telling Shekana that um, I experienced some of the same things that she experienced when she was saying that, um, you know, black men have dogged her and they've you know went outside their race and they've said how much of this race no matter if it's white asian whatever it is is so much better than black women and i was telling her sharing that experience with her like i've experienced the same thing when i used to be in uh sex work in the adult film industry like black men would be a lot of black men would be like oh i'm not de dealing with y'all y'all don't look as good as the right. white girls or you don't um you know, you're not as progressed or as uh, passable as the white girls. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, even though I've received lots of those types of traumas and black men um, are a large percentage of men that kill trans women and stuff like that. Well, black trans women, I'm still not really dating outside of my race. Right. I'm not anti everybody else. I'm just pro black. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like. I don't know, I have this conversation a lot with my friends. Like, there's definitely an issue around black men not wanting to date black women. And mm -hmm. it's, people have conversations about, like, love is love, like, date who you want to date. But it's a little bit more than that. Like, I feel like people talk a lot about, like, preference and, like, oh, I have this preference. But there's always, like, a politic in your preference. Mm -hmm. um, particularly if you're continuously dating people who, like, adhere to whiteness or they're closer to white beauty standards. I feel like that speaks to internalized racism or mm. internalized trauma. And like, mm -hmm. that's a conversation that people don't want to talk about a lot. I want a white man. Um, oh, <laughs> why do you want a white man? Shikana? I just want him. Why do you think Shekana wants a white why, man? Why? Let me know. Let me know. Mm. Although I will say like, I feel like it's different for black women to date outside of their race than for black men. Like what I've noticed is like, Black women, black trans women, anyone who's like dating black men, it's usually, it or dating not dating black men, it's usually coming from a place of like, I'm just looking for love. Whereas I feel like the narrative that I've seen a lot with black men is like, I don't like black women and this is why I want to date. Like it's always like you're putting down black women in order to date these other races. So I'm putting their ass down because I want a white man. <laughs> but you can't. You can't talk about it and then go and do the same thing that they do. You can't fight fire with fire. I've been wanting a white man. Why? Tell us Why? more about that. Oh, because I feel like, you know, I've dated a couple blacks and um yeah, I don't like their dating technique. What is their dating technique? Shit, I ain't shit. So you think if you got with a white man that it's gonna be this shit? He might be he might keep certain things secret. He might not tell it all. He might not, you know, bring it to your face and stuff like that. If I mess with him, he probably got a woman somewhere in Peru. <laughs> so Jackie, you think dating outside of your race? Uh, is because you want to see if something is different and not necessary. Because to me, it sounds like I, that you're not really attracted, but you want to just try something different. I wasn't attracted to them niggas I was fucking with before. 
she kind of sound like she got some internalized stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, trauma. It, mm -hmm. I do. It depends. It depends. Yeah, like it depends on like where that's coming from. I feel like sometimes, if you have experienced a lot of trauma with black men, black men are out of confusion. What? Then that can sort of cause you. Shakana, to want to I used to be reasons. a black man, and I, you probably was an author confusion. Maybe that's why it reflects like this. Is this confusion? No, this is beautiful. I just had to test your skills real quick. I'm just letting you know you're beautiful. Thank you, baby. And this had nothing to do with you because right now you're a girl to me. Okay, you're a part woman. of the girls. A you're woman. a woman, a grown ass woman. Yeah. So you had nothing to do with that. Like I said, these black men. Okay, period. Girl, what does that mean? Do you have listening to her, Jackie? Do, what are you? What, so, is it, do you feel like it's coming from negative experiences, or has it just it always been that It comes from their goddamn mamas. Hmm. So, are we blaming black women? <laughs> we can, cause they done raised some bullshit out here in East Street. Whose fault is it though? The mamas. But whose That's fault is the, how, how is the how is it the mama's fault? It's the mama and the daddy fault for having these motherfuckers. That's why my grandma always say you supposed to check your jeans what you had these children by. Cause a lot of them just out here fucking out of wetlock, wetlock. Then had a baby got a demon spirit on it cause the daddy had a demon spirit and they grew up to be demons to sell. I think the black community in general has experienced a lot of trauma and people are reacting in different ways to that trauma that being said black women have also experienced that same trauma and aren't acting in that way to black men so i feel like that's where like patriarchy comes in mm -hmm. like you're seeing this intersection between like patriarchy and anti-blackness which obviously is going to impact black women black trans women the most mm -hmm. and i think that's what's taking place and that's why you have these very unhealthy dynamics sometimes mm -hmm. when it comes to trying to date black men um, and so I've seen a lot of black women just sort of be like, kind of what you mentioned about still wanting to date black men, even though you faced all these different experiences, because maybe you feel like there's more commonality or maybe you feel like you don't have to like explain yourself or you're not being fetishized in certain ways than sort of not being treated in a way that feels like you're some sort of specimen. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's at least what I've heard or that's been even my experience when it comes to like wanting to continue to date black men. I was in Europe for uh, about 14 days. What did you love it? One thing I have found out mm -hmm. that you black everywhere you go. Oh yeah, absolutely. Truly black. Absolutely. We couldn't get a cab for two hours. Yeah, like anti-blackness is very- This is why, prominent. and I don't want to come off in a racist manner because I'm not. But this is why I'm very strongly about black and black. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. when you step outside of America or the American values and shit like that, you black. Yeah. And this is what black men that I try to, when I talk to black men about the gripe that I have with them at times about the way that you treat black women in totality, black, black bio women and black trans women, the way you treat the girls in totality. Mm -hmm. It's like, nigga, you's always going to be a nigga. I think it, it really comes from within. Like, I think you must not value the blackness in yourself. Mm -hmm. And like, that's why you don't see the value of blackness in other people, whether it's black women, black trans, anything. Like, I feel like that's really where it's coming from. Um, and I feel like that's a really hard conversation to have because it's like, how do you get people to like, look at themselves in the mirror and understand like the different systems at play that cause them to not like themselves? Like, who taught you to hate yourselves? No one wants to have that conversation. No one wants to look deeply into that and realize that that can impact, like, who your friends are. It can impact who you're dating. It can impact so many aspects of the way you choose to move through life. Um, but because Black women sit at this intersection, we're experiencing so much of the harm. And I feel like that's a whole another conversation about, like, misogynoir, but, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a whole ass thing. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it impacts our dating lives. It impacts how people choose to sort of seek out relationships. Um, and I feel like it's just, it's just very ever present. And so there's, there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So let me ask you this question, question, Jackie, right? I have a question. And my question is, what about, and this might throw you for a loop. Okay. There, are, <laughs> there are white people mm -hmm. who have, God, I don't know how to say this right, but I'm just going to say it the way people would understand out there, who have blackness attached to them. And I can give the example, like, whoa, Vicky. 
She oh, black. Like Paul Wall. Oh. No, Whoa, Vicky is not black. She's white. I know she white, but I'm saying she acts black. Right. But I'm also saying, what do you think about it? Is that black fishing? I definitely think it's it's either black fishing or cultural appropriation because I feel like it's white people who are trying to like, A, escape whiteness, but also they're trying to get closer to blackness for the social capital that's attached to that. Black is cool. Even though we're continuously oppressed, like, there's still this narrative that like being black is cool. And so you see a lot of people who are using that to get further in life. And I feel like it's a very weird space because people who are actually black are may not necessarily experience that same upward mobility when they quote unquote act black. But oh. yeah, I definitely think it's cultural appropriation, but I don't think it makes <laughs> Woe Vicky black. Paul Wall. <laughs> Cause he's from Houston. He's a rapper from Houston, Texas, okay. you know, I'm something like an ant because I'm low to the earth. You yeah, know, yeah. he used to rap with Mike Jones and all of them back in the day. How Are you young, young? I'm, I'm pretty young. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Mike Jones is from back in the day. And so, you know, when I saw Paul Wall, I watched the interview where Paul Wall said, I didn't know that I was white until I actually was told that I was white. He said, I was just in the hood and I just was around the folks and you know, this is this is who his, his character is. Now, I do believe mm. that that is his character. Would that fall under a, 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 a class of transracial? I think that's more like maybe transcultural. Like I think it's possible ah. to like grow up in a certain neighborhood or grow up in a certain environment where you're tied to a culture that's not necessarily yours. Transcultural. But I think like maybe culturally the lines can for sure be blurred. And mm -hmm. I feel like you can definitely identify with a certain culture more than another one. But if you're going out in the world and maybe other people are interacting with you as a white person, then are you really having the black experience? I don't know. Well, I maybe think he, I honestly think that he's having that they both no shade because I know she kind of is over there like that she like her, <laughs> but I think that they're both having the black experience. Yeah, and they're adjacent, like far, far adjacent yeah. to it, far, far adjacent. But Say, that's what makes it different. Is like you, if you can switch it on and off. Like some days I want to be black because it's cool. Some days I'm going to be white because it's it benefits me. I feel like that's what makes it a little bit tricky. It's like you can't. I mean, for me, like, if I got into the world, it's like, you are a black woman. There's no, you know what I mean? There's not some days off, some days on, and then right. some days, like, it's just, that's just what it is. And so I feel like if, whether or not you identify with the culture or you're transcultural, like, if you, if that's not your experience or you're able to switch it on and off, I would say that's still sort of, like, maybe you're transcultural, maybe it's cultural appropriation. I guess it, def it depends how, it, how, you're, how you're showing it. Jackie, where can we get your book? Um, the book is available anywhere. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, anywhere where books are sold. Definitely give me a copy. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching Ask an Expert on Asking for a Friend on Blavity TV. We love Sister, you. We love you. Thank you for having we me. love you. We thank you for coming through. Of course. I want to talk more in depth with you about Absolutely. the situation, and I want to sit down with Shakana and have we got to we got to dig into this. In, uh, unpack <laughs> some stuff. Shakana has a lot of internal life stuff going on with her. No, I don't. You do. I don't. We'll see y'all in a minute. In a minute. <laughs> oh my God, what a freaking season. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Asking for a Friend, honey, with your host, T.S. Madison. I had so much fun doing this, reading your comments, looking at your engagements, and the calls to calling in to asking for a friend. Oh my God, amazing. I hope you guys learned a thing or two because I know I did. And I wanna thank my guests for coming through and dropping the gems that they dropped because God damn it, they were the bomb. Now listen, this is the infamous T.S. Madison signing off. And always remember, wherever you see me, don't meet me there, bitch. Beat me there. <laughs>